All right, everybody, welcome to Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolian, and with me, as always, is the human pistachio <laughs> machine. <laughs> Hailing from the streets of Bayside, (laughs) Jonathan Adler. Mm, Like I'm salty and roasted. Do you open them like this? I do them. I I just chew everything in my mouth. Yeah? I eat shells and all. You spit them back in the bag that Andrew has? (laughs) I've seen someone eat sunflower seeds like that. What, eat them all? Eat them all? Like they literally just dump it in their mouth. They just chew on and just spit it all out. Is that person me? Because that's what I eat. Is that that how you eat sunflower seeds? Disgusting. It's delicious. I buy buy shelled sunflower seeds. I do too. Yeah. Like a normal person, now. <laughs> <laughs> spitting little black just, bits of seed everywhere. No, I eat them. I, I swallow them. You down. eat the seeds. Yeah, I can eat the the shells like a bird. Those. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, you need yeah. uh, some roughage in your diet. Yeah, yeah. these are these are practically <laughs> bones. I know it's good. <laughs> Yeah. All right, welcome to Behind the Salty, Counter. This is your, uh, your enough about pistachios. <laughs> Let me tell you a little about pistachios. <laughs> this is your show about comic books. Save we have, my we, marriage. We have an episode today. We have a whopping episode today that we're going to talk to. We're going to talk about. We're going to talk stuff. to the show. We're going to talk to uh, the we're, comic books. We're wind talkers now, but with comic books, we're going to talk a lot about entitlement, uh, fan <laughs> fandom, fandom, uh, the return of the comics code in a different form. Mm. Um, I feel like I could dedicate a whole year to that shit. Yeah, I know. It's it, it. You know what? You know what I did after you sent me that thing. <laughs> Got I, yet angry. I downloaded a bunch of uh, Monero stuff. <laughs> yeah, I feel good about this. Yeah. Uh, so what's up, man? What's up? What's going on? Got news. Did you watch Guard Scouts yet? I did not. Shame, man. Did not. I. You know what? I, that was my on my trip. I was I remember. like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this as soon as I got there. I was like, I'm gonna relax. Mm, just soon. I know. Go do I it. Give it. it some money. I Ninja Turtles is beating it. I'll give it some money. I kind of I'm gonna uh, I might give that some money too. No. Yeah. It sounds terrible. I heard it was excellent. I don't believe that. No one says it's excellent. Coco yeah. said it's excellent. Did he? I don't know. And I'm I'm not up with my Coco times. Huh? Did he put out a newsletter? Who? Coco. A you guys are always up on the like the I, Coco uh, news. I subscribe to Coco on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got to pay nine ninety nine. It's like the rusting <laughs> of Turtles. Uh. Should go see that movie. Don't see Ninja Turtles. Don't waste your time. Yeah. If I know you still you see very limited amount of movies in the theater. I do. Who's he guarding? Everybody out there. I think I'm gonna go oh, he Guardians. loved it. He loved Turtles. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I got it. <laughs> I got got the notification. Uh, do we have any news this week? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, first things first. Uh, Doc Strange movie. Right. Happening. Go. Uh, they Doc supposedly Holloway. made a real Kevin Feige, the guy who runs the whole movie thing. I mm. say Feige. Yeah. Do you say Feige? Of course I do. Feige. <laughs> Kevin Feige, uh, head honcho, uh, he basically said that the Doc Strange movie, they're going to skip the origin and just go right to the action. So he is just sitting in a room with Wong, yeah, telling him he's a terrible human being. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what we saw this week is going to be uh, what you saw in, uh, in the comic. Um, I, I, I like the idea. I think yeah. it's his, his origin is cool, but I like it better as just you know something we can pass through and just get to Dormammu. And stuff like yeah, that. I mean, you you have to have some an Avengers thing in it. You have to have uh, some. I feel like they may go more of a cosmic route than like a magic route. I don't know. They they mentioned yeah. him in um Captain America. Yeah, that's the first mention of Stephen Strange. Okay, the Stephen, the Stephen, Doctor Stephen, Stephen, <laughs> Doctor Stefan. Uh, I'm looking forward to any Marvel movie now that that's just gonna get me because they're gonna keep getting better. Yeah, I want Ant Man. I'm pretty excited about Ant Man. I I hope it's good. Mm-hmm. There's a they showed Evangeline and Lily. Uh, this week, and she has like the uh, the Mary, Mary Tyler Moore hair. Oh, so awesome. they're saying that she's going for uh, that, even though she's playing Hank Pym's daughter, that she's going to be the Wasp. Okay. Sorry. Um, you don't read orig- original sins, right? Sins. They don't. Sins. Uh, the last issue came out this week. Uh, real. I didn't finish. I just read the the main story. Mm-hmm. Uh, or the beginning story. Uh, they did a really cool thing with Fury and Dum Dum. So okay. this story is like when everything's going down, he's in space, in the, the in space, and like he's talking to all of his LMDs. Uh, Dum Dum comes up there and says, like, you know, you're a crazy man. What's going on? I know this isn't you. And he tells him, like, you're a robot, man. Like you, like this whole time you've been a robot. And he's like, oh, you full of shit. And then he goes, like, you know, uh, it's like, yeah, like you were designed to be like my conscious. Like in '66, we were coming out of, you know, a, in Vietnam. Yeah. And you caught, like, on the way back, you caught a stray bullet. You thought you were going to be okay. And you died in that thing. And I always kept you alive by making robots. Uh huh. And he's like, you know, he doesn't believe him. And he's like, you know, uh, you know, you're full of shit. And he's like, you know what? If I am your conscious, like, this is showing you how far you've fallen. And he blows his brains out. Ain't a freaking robot. Wow. Yeah, it was very. 
good. That's that's, very, that's insane. Good. I passed on it. I passed on it, even though I knew it was like the secrets revealed. Um, Original Sins was awesome. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll, I'll give you my uh, my run. It's a Send good, me the run, solid, please. really crazy Young Avengers hood storyline. Yeah, too. Very okay. Good. I'll uh, I'll check that out because that sounds fantastic, man. Why wouldn't he be a robot at this point? Yeah, because they never really explained how Duggan's like still kind of young. That's how they go. That's where it all the heart the whole thing starts. Where it's like you know uh, he's saying how the Infinity Form doesn't you know Nick Fury saying it doesn't work anymore. He's like, mm-hmm. well, I'm I look younger than you at this point. It still works for me. He's like, no, you're a robot, man. Yeah, it's good. It's really really cool tight little story. That's pretty crazy, man. Spears Foes of Spider Man is now canceled as of seventeen. What? Yeah, man. That is one of my favorite books. I know. Uh the last the last the whole run has been amazing. The hammerhead stuff? The hammerhead stuff's been <laughs> great how he's just like obsessed come, with come the on, with the Silvermane. <laughs> Silvermane. <laughs> and Silvermane's like Silvermane is uh <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's a, he's like he's like Uncle Junior from uh, Sopranos. Yeah, he's like or, or like Larry David. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like very bespeckled. Ah, uh, you gonna give me a pizza? Yeah. You gonna give me a pizza? Very. It's a. I I was thinking about the there's the first time we've had a lot of books on the shelf that are are very Hawkeye for the most part. Yeah, we're taking alternative looks at of how these characters are displayed and mm-hmm. Superior Foes is it's a book you knew from the get go once you really liked it. It's like it's destined to be canceled. Um, I so. But it's so like yeah. I'm I'm glad it's gotten this far, and I'm glad it's like I think it's gonna go down in in history as like another way, next wave as something that I kind of appreciate mm-hmm. after it's gone. I was just kind of thinking about that because yeah. it's it's been a fantastic book, man. I really so I, you know like the whole thing with Boomerang and how like he's just a schlub who used to play for the Mets and yeah everybody on the team and the story about how um uh what's his name got his powers I think it was the last issue Overdrive Overdrive. How he yeah. wants to be Hawkeye, right? Yeah, and yeah. he wants to be like an Avenger, and he, he wants to know. be a villain to that will eventually mm-hmm. be like told by Captain America, like you could do better than this. But now he can't. <laughs> yeah, he can't do it. Yeah, um, it, 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 it was a fantastic. I can't believe that man. It sucks. Yeah. It's very disappointing. You're I know. Full of bad news today. I know. Uh, there's another book that's canceled. Uh, New Warriors is also being canceled. <laughs> you don't care so much about that. No, I don't. I don't, I don't read it. Uh, the other thing we want to talk about, since we're just going to lead into mm-hmm. uh, the uh, the other piece of news. Uh, this week, early in the week, Bleeding Cool, Rich Johnson had a little bit about uh, there's a big movement towards Spider-Woman number one coming out. I think Marvel's trying to get ahead of it before they lock her into some weird Sony deal mm. that they can use her. Uh, so they're putting on new number one with her, making a big deal about it. And one of the alternate covers, one of the variants, is a Mal Manera cover. Uh, Mal Manera, who, you don't, who, if you don't know, is probably one of the Best sexy lady drawers of uh, of our generation. You call him an erotic artist. <laughs> yeah, sexy lady drawers. Yeah, uh, sexy lady drawer. This guy. <laughs> he draws the sexy ladies. Uh, very, very good. Like he's an excellent, mm-hmm. excellent artist. But they're saying that this is a little bit too reminiscent of a story where <laughs> a woman has a sex box put into vagina mm-hmm. that can be activated by a pervert at any moment, and she's having an orgasm with a butt up in the air. When I saw the picture of this of the spider woman, that's the butt in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I. It looked like a regular Milo Monero drawing. Yeah. And I'm like, and so this, so the whole article is all about like, oh, people, this is going to be a thing that people are mm. outraged about. A thousand headlines are going to launch from this thing. Yeah. And I meet like, usually I don't do this, but immediately I went to go click on the comment section. Oh, yeah. And there's no comment thread attached to it. So whatever, like, I think a lot of people were jumping on it and saying like, uh, this stupid. Is, this is stupid. Like, yeah. what are you even bothering bringing this up? I checked comic book resources today and they report about how people will, are supposed to get outraged by the bleeding cool thing, uh, mm. by the article, and then basically had Dan Slott saying, like, listen, if you've seen Mom and Air's work for, you know, the last 20, 30 years, you would see that this is his gig. This is what he does. Yeah. yeah this is like why you you check him out. Yeah. There's two there's a checklist with uh Milo Monero artwork. Is there a check? Yes. Yes. Button in the air, check. Yes. Is it a leg spread? Check. check. Triple check. But that's what she does. Like that's what that's what he does. Right. Uh and like I feel like this is kind of like was overall like I think mm. most headlines on the online are just a are clickbait in terms of oh yeah let me get outraged like I think there's a certain mm. part of us that really gets off on like getting offended yeah. at this time and I think like uh, you know the way that we're kind of covering this news and the way they were looking at this stuff is just it's it's overdone and it's becoming like a weirdo comics code mm-hmm. it is it's and it's a shame too and we're and we're i feel like we fall into the category of dudes who get outraged by the outrage yeah uh, yeah exactly like, yeah you know, we, we get like, meta rage <laughs> like, re- like relax yeah. it's a comic book who cares yeah. relax yeah. you know it's not hurting you it's not it's not destroy it's not breaking up your family <laughs> yeah and I, I think a lot of people like that are getting outraged. I mean, a lot of it's coming from, and I don't want to be an anti-feminist, but like a mm. lot of it comes from like the new feminist movement, which is just as bad as any conservative person out there because mm. it is a very conservative way of thinking. Yeah. Um, 
and I feel like I'm a little I I lean a little bit more to the left, but still, like I think there's a I, there's a time and a place mm-hmm. for this stuff. This is still comic books. This mm-hmm. is something you've been reading since the, the days of old of seeing mm-hmm. Starfire, of you know back in the day in the right. '80s when Marv Wolfman was doing it. Right. Uh, you know all of the Jim Lee X Men stuff where everyone was in bikinis oh God, having sex yeah. with each other. No one said a thing, and they still praise that stuff as the untouchable kind of you know. The sexy stuff. It's pretty crazy, man. It's really crazy when you think about it too. Like any, like all the all the nineties, your general nineties art for any book had ridiculous proportion men and women. Yeah, the, the men thing. No one says anything about it, right. about everyone being a jacked up dude. Mm-hmm. Look at uh, like a comic book like Brute and Babe. That's yeah, blast from the past for you. You know, like, big naked people with no dicks and vaginas. Right. You know, yeah. just like walk, like floating around out of space. With um, no real story. Uh, and but it's it. You know. You know what it is. It's like I feel like this is. This is the way that your Fairweather fans who don't really read a ton of books or just like like comics in passing, this is how they get away with getting their voice heard. Yeah. Which is, you know what, like, oh no, don't you be doing that. It's 2014. Yeah. Ridiculous. And I also, I, I mean, and that goes along with what we've talked about before with the idea of, you know, oh my God, we need to have like minorities everywhere. Mm-hmm. We need to put the minorities, like, yes, there's a, a, a place for it, but. Why are we not creating more new characters like no. like Falcon? Okay, Falcon the turn, you know, Falcon meets Captain America. I have uh-huh. really no problem with it because he is he, he's owed a shot. Yeah, like he's bit like everyone in like the supporting cast should eventually be Captain America. Yeah, so like fine, like Falcon has been wait, like he's been the guy. Like, is, is it gonna be Falcon this time? Give it to Falcon this time. Yeah, but I at the heart of it, it feels like you know, like, as much as I love Miles Morales, as much as I love the, these ideas, like I feel like there's we want to hit too many. Uh, to like all the things like you know, is it, can we create a a black gay lesbian uh right, she hulk yeah. at this point you know there's st- a lot of stuff they were that just want to capture those niche markets and be a headline at this mm-hmm. point where it doesn't really add anything overall to the mythology of the character right it's the stuff that you're gonna forget about it's gonna become the next jack flag all right do you know what i think also about like that I, like i agree with that uh completely 100 mm. percent. just it's it, like it's gotten to the point where it's you know it's like it's the media money-making machine you know the headline grabber um, it shouldn't be the first thing you're thinking about in terms of a story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing with the Spider Woman thing, where you know what? Uh, to the average person, like, do they really know how? Or like the average comic fan, they'll see a variant cover, but those covers are like one out of ten, or like yeah. one out of twenty, or whatever. You know, yeah. if it's like the alternate cover, whatever, fine. It's, and they've been using Monero for the last like two years now for variants. Uh, more than that, I think. Yeah, yeah, and um, and he always puts out like great stuff, man. And there's like there's like a whole if you look up like the Monero, uh. It's his thing, you know, like he's making, he does, he does sexy lady he's pictures. An of, you know? He's an artist of uh, Sandman, the upper echelon of artists. Right. So like you have something like that and it's like, you know, I'm outraged by the cover that I would have to pay extra money for and it's my choice not to buy it. <laughs> you know? That's what I'm saying. Like, he's just really, I, I, I mean, it comes with the internet being there, being a public soapbox for everything. Mm-hmm. I think that, uh, that we're worrying too much about the, the pocket that, like we've always talked about, the the it's the squeaky wheel syndrome when it comes to internet comments, yeah. Especially with this particular industry. Industry. Grimm's fairy tales is still getting made. Yeah, man. Uh, there's, I'm sure. We, there's... Grimm's fairy tales has been going on as long as, like, what the last 10, 15 years, ten, like, maybe ten, 10 years. years. Yeah. Lady Death is still everywhere. Lady Death. Listen, like, if you're complaining about, like, that's that's the thing again. Like, you're playing in the wrong areas. You're playing in the wrong areas. It's the mainstream. Like, oh, Marvel should know better. Can't do this. She got a butt in the air. That Catwoman thing that happened last year, also with DC. Oh so yeah, like, you know, like she's poorly proportioned. Outrage. And that. Out, it's it's out, the outrage is outrageous. Yeah, it's also going to be the title of this episode. Outrageous. Um, but it it drives me up a wall to hear those stories and to see like how it gets so overblown, especially online, where it's like the fan fervor of like, you know, like this can't happen, this can't happen, this can't happen, and it makes waves. Yeah. You know, and I also feel like part of it is just people who have a bug up their ass and they just want to do it to do it. Yeah. You know, and complain and be complainy because it's there. That's the next level of comic fandom. Yeah. Cause fans who always write in, you know, you see it on Twitter, you know, we hear it all the time, complain about every single thing that's not going their way. Yeah. And I think this is the next level of it where companies have to take notice and then actually make it go your way. Yeah. I mean, that goes for every type of <clears throat> industry. I mean, the mo- movie industry had to adapt mm-hmm. to that like really hardcore when it came, when yeah. it first started happening on, on news sites. But and not, like with the uh, experiment, like Spider Man, yeah. when Don Glover first said, because he was the first moment really where they said, like, you know, like, oh, you know, I want to be a play Spider Man. 
they kind of said it half jokingly, and then it became a serious thing, which is, well, why hasn't there been a black Spider-Man? Because, yeah. like, he's not a black dude. Yeah. Like, it, so they answered it by making Miles Morales. But, like, why was that even part of the conversation? Like, yeah. why, like, do you, do we need to, like, it's like, oh, well, why is, why is Thor blonde? Why should we make this guy blonde? Mm. Like, I feel this, like, there's, at this point, the way that they're setting themselves up, I feel because there's a, a small, a young Muslim, Ms. Marvel, and Carol, Carol Danvers has been around forever. And I love Ms. I love the, the Muslim thing, even mm. though that you, you dropped the book because you're, you hate. Muslims. Well, see, <laughs> don't make it sound like you're like. I know no, that's no, why you dropped no, the you book. Dropped, you dropped the book. I dropped because I didn't like the book. Yeah. But I, I enjoy it. But I'm saying is like the, the uh-huh. point of it is, and I don't mean to throw you in the bus. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. Pure, poor, poor joke. Uh, I think that uh, because we have like Cal Dameron who's been around forever, and like uh-huh. there's a possibility that she's going to be moved up into a uh, movie property. Yeah. Um, especially with all the cosmic stuff they're going to do, that there's going to be a weird pocket. And mark my words, is saying, well, how come you know the the minority is not being you know. How come showcased. She's, yeah, yeah, how come she's not the one being showcased? Comic books are a weird and crazy thing where you can get away with that and say like, oh, how come there wasn't a black Spider-Man? How come there wasn't a Muslim Miss Marvel in the movie that I want to see? How come there wasn't a Latino Captain America? There's no Latino Captain America. Yet. Yet. Um, Yet. It's going to be Sunspot. Just <laughs> wait. I'm okay with that. So, but it's, it's when you think about it, <clears throat> these are fictionalized, obviously it's completely pure fiction that's been around forever, yeah. right? And it's serialized, and I think therein lies the rub, where you're getting this stuff constantly. You can do anything in the world of comics, right? Yeah. Just imagine if people protested Peter Jackson and was like, yo, I want a black Gandalf <laughs> right now. Yeah. It's also the name of my black metal band. Black Gandalf. Uh, <laughs> um, like, and, and you would have to answer that. And like, but you also get the opposite, where you know how many people complain about a black kingpin? Or, or, um, I was one of them. Or what's his name uh, playing Hemdal? Yeah, well, I don't care about that. Yeah, that was that was a big one. You know, that was the other side of it where it just like you know all the all like the pocket racists started yeah. poking their heads out. It's really cr- and plus like working at working at the store together, you kind of see uh, yeah. like the mentality of that. The roots like, of it all. I'm not gonna see it because so and so is like ah, oh, they made him a black guy. You know, or like Battlestar. Battlestar was a huge one. Yeah, when Battlestar came out, when we were working at the store together, Battlestar Galactica. Um, you got so much refusal from people to watch it because it wasn't, Starbuck wasn't a dude. Oh, that's right. That's right. You remember that? Yeah. And it yeah. was like, it was, it's not the same thing. It's not, you know, like you're supposed to have Starbuck and Apollo and one of them is a chick. You're not supposed to be kissing and people went friggin' <laughs> crazy. But I think, it. I think he was, Ronald D. Moore was, was smart enough to, uh, mm-hmm. to like, Push it to him. Like, we need to put these two people into like a weird relationship. Yeah, to play with that the mm-hmm. stereotype. And how amazing was, was Battlestar Galactica? I mean, that was, that was one of the greatest. Yeah, boo hoo! Starbucks a chick. It's so ridiculous. I remember one of our customers wouldn't watch the Batman movies because uh, he couldn't. He was too distracted by uh, Christian Bale's mole near his eye. A lot of that people sounds like you actually. <laughs> was it you? <laughs> I've actually heard that comment from a lot of people. You never know what people like, but to, and it's fine. You can make your comments. That's what you know. It's it's what we're here for. Comment to us. Yeah. But when it crosses the line of like, I'm going to start a petition to make X, Y, and Z happen because I don't like the chick with her butt in the air, you know, just don't buy it. It's the medium. Like, and like the argument a lot of times is like, well, the medium should be, uh, you know, evolving and growing mm-hmm. up with it. And it has. Yeah. Like there are oh, yeah. like there are very creative alternatives. If you don't want like God, gods and goddesses in spandex putting their butt in the air. Right. Like there are so many other comics you can be reading. And for the last 20, 30 years, it's been like that. Yeah. There's no problem finding those options. But like, if you want to read X-Men, mm-hmm. there's good chance you're going to get a lot of cleavage. Right. And no one really comes out X-Men about reading that stuff. I think it yeah. always happens with like, I think the, I think the DC characters, there's a lot of reasons why you complain about DC characters, mm-hmm. but I think the main, a lot of stuff they've always come under fire and they handle this type of shit very poorly over the years. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, because like you can see like how your, like how your DC female, um, pantheon could be considered sex pots. Yeah. Well, cause like, that's the thing is like, uh, a lot of fishnets. Yeah. Like, like Harley Quinn Mm -hmm. and power girl are like two icons of like DC fem feminism, Mm -hmm. uh, power girl because, uh, Dodson worked on the book. right? Right. Uh, it became a big thing about like you know, oh she can be this like because JSA and also because of JSA because mm-hmm. she's written so well, uh, it's like oh she could be this like really incredible character. But you have to remember at the end of the day is like that character was 
strictly put on Earth to show her boobs. Right. I love the character. I think right. she's an awesome, awesome character. Mm -hmm. But there became this weird thing like, oh, we need to cover her up and we need to like do this. like that's her that's her shit. Like yeah. that's her her bread bread and butter. Harley, uh, Harley, I wasn't Harley Race. Harley Race. <laughs> great, great deal. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, have we been reading Harley Race? For I, know, years? I wish I was reading more Harley Race. That Harley would have been Quinn. a good segue into Multiversity. Harley, <laughs> I'm, I'm leaning up to that. Harley, yeah. Harley Quinn, like, uh, the thing with her is, like, you know, for whatever reasons, they, like, women have really attached herself, them to mm -hmm. her, and made into a character that she really never was. Right. Like, she has always been, like, from her. Original Inception in the comic book, in the in the, the cartoon, she had one issue, one episode of being sympathetic where they show her like her background, right? And everything else, she's a sad, sadist, maniac murderer that's obsessed with the Joker, the serial killer, right? Uh, and they've made her into like a once like you know they they took the Arkham look for her, yeah, you know for the new Fifty Two, and it's like oh we're gonna make her really sexy, we're gonna make her sympathetic now. Yeah, it's 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 uh, the arc of the character is kind of strange. And yeah. then there was that big outcry when they had the Harlequin uh, 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 thing with Gail Simone. Where they had all the different artists come in and like right. do their pages, and they had the one where she's in a bathtub and she like scoots herself with with the uh, with a bunch of like radios and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a big outrage over that. I'm like, why? Yeah, this is her character. She's a cartoon. Yeah, she's a killer cartoon people get crazy about that man yeah wasn't that there was like a thing with uh wasn't it the author of twilight where she was getting fan mail and like one of them was just like i will blow my brains out if you let this happen yeah um yeah it gets nuts man and like because everybody has so it's gonna i feel like it's gonna implode as far as like the social media stuff goes and it's gonna be like we're not gonna get a comics code but we're gonna probably get like a big deal with it at mm. some point you know like listen like we're not taking any more questions we're not answering any more comments like you get what you get and that's it yeah yeah, I think so. Let's talk about comics. Let's talk about, about comics. The good, the good part of it. The good part about it, yeah. Which um, one do you want to do first? Ah, oh, man, that's tough. Let's do Avengers because I want to kind of, I want to talk at length about multiversity. I also want to talk at length about New Avengers also. Right. But yes, New Avengers. Yeah. Uh, ranting and raving how much we love this book. Mm -hmm. This is the book about the Illuminati. They're, they've come clean. Uh, they just come out of uh, fighting the JLA, killing the JLA, mm -hmm. and them all kind of coming at a crossroads where... Are they able to destroy another universe? Right. Uh, they did. The answer the was issue. the answer was no, except for Namor, who decided to both put a universe of guilt on everyone's shoulders, especially Black Panther, yep. while blowing away a planet, which not many people can do with the style and panache that he did. Right. Exactly. He's Namor. Yeah. And then the story ended with seven minutes until, or seven hours until the uh, another incursion, another universe about to destroy their universe. Right. So the whole issue, this issue, details uh, like every, it's about two or three with like four power grids, four, four like long, mm -hmm. long power grids of each of the Illuminati going to visit the place that they feel is most important for the end of the world because they've all made the decision that they can't destroy another planet, they can't destroy another mm -hmm. universe, that this is their time, yeah. that they are like they've reached their pinnacle, this is it, time of the universe is over. It's like Hulk goes to the desert to go drink. Has a beer on a, uh, just waiting for the end. Waiting to die because so yeah. he, he's finally beating the, uh, being Hulk. Mm -hmm. uh, Hank, which is very, I think I think Beast has been a really fascinating character this last year. They're all very telling where they go. You yeah. Know? He goes to go meet his younger version. <laughs> he goes to talk to himself, basically. Yeah. And like, hey, he draws the fact that, you know, you, you've done all this stuff for the Illuminati, but mm -hmm. the main thing is like, how do you think it's a good idea to bring all of our younger selves into this universe now to die in this in this collapse of the universe right like why did you do like how like when did you become such an f up yeah um which and, is telling too because like later on the all new all new x-men stuff mm -hmm. later on he just loses his mind he right. starts cracking up um well do uh reed actually went to go visit his daughter which is great who is being taken care of by dr doom that's the best part of all the fantastic four garbage is that right now yeah. is that she's living with uh doom again it's fantastic yeah so he goes you know she goes he goes he wakes her up and Doom has a really good line about uh, all kids need to sleep, <laughs> um, and basically he not he didn't go, but he didn't go there to go visit his daughter. He didn't go there to see Franklin right. or anything like that. He went there for him to talk to the only person who's smarter than her than him right. and tell him that he's a fuck up. Right. Well, and then she turned. She was like, "Daddy, what'd you do?" Yeah. And he was like, "I'm sorry, I blew it up." Yeah. Um, Tony, I guess Tony was in his basement with like a like he just poured himself an entire bottle of shots. Yeah. And then was like, "I'm not gonna drink this." Yeah. How it was a good line about the putting the demon back in the bottle type of thing. Yeah. Uh, 
Black Panther with Storm has a really great scene with her. Yes. That's very defining about the whole relationship between her, like how he's saying, like, I kind of loved you forever and mm. saying, you know, basically that that just worked out for the better for the both, for, for at least for Storm. And that right. he's the heartbroken man and that he's lost himself. Who else was there? Doctor Strange. That Strange was a great one. It was the mm-hmm. Wong. Ask Wong if he's a good person. Wong says absolutely not. That's I like the depth that that you know. It's like just the, that scene plays out. The depth of every how like Hickman's writing everybody's arc in this is more than it's more com- it's more than comic books. You know, it's not you're you're not scratching the surface of like well we have to do it and then the good guys win. You know, this is a story about the failure and like going too far, which is yeah. something Hickman is very good at doing, and mm-hmm. like especially with his Fantastic Four run with the the arc that Reed went through with yeah. the other realities. It's like these are people who are just at the pinnacle of humanity who are, you know, gone too far and they're realizing, you know, who can't handle it. They can't handle it. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, that's like whatever, uh, obviously, like to us, and that's like the meta thing about it is like to your fans and to people who are reading the stories, they've done all this awesome stuff. But in the reality of the comic book reality, is they can't handle all the crazy shit that they've done. Yeah. And man. this is where it's led them. The burden know? is too high. The burden, their, their brains can't handle yeah. it. Uh, they end up making really weird and dumb decisions and meeting people from other planets. Especially when Reed and Tony get together. Right. And that's kind of like, I feel like re- after the Hickman run and, and the New Avengers run, the thing with Reed is that he can't help himself. No. We we said we saw it early in, this, oh, in the middle part of the storyline where, mm-hmm. you know, if you read uh, uh, Hickman's run in Fantastic Four, the whole thing revolves around him creating a gate that allows him to access all these other universes where he creates a community of all these Richards. Of all him. To solve all the problems in the world. And it was a yeah. terrible mistake. Of course everything goes wrong. Right. And he destroys it fast and never do this thing. And it's like the, a huge story. Mm. And he rebuilds it just to make a window, just to see what's going on and see these other planets. Yeah. Just I guess full circle. It. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um, And then that last issue culminated with... Also, but also there's also that strange scene where he has one of the, the black priest's helmets. Yeah. And... I think where the where, where part of the storyline has been showing is that something like Doctor Strange, like I think he's they're gonna have something to do with the creation of these black priests. Okay, I think they're gonna have some type of weird like you know connection. Yeah, where it was they're all Doctor Strange. Yeah, they're all Doctor Strange. Um, it could be that they're all the Illuminati. That's what I'm thinking because it looks like the same guys in power type of thing. Yeah, which is bananas. It's a, it's a really crazy story and like it's one of those really long Hickman stories where it's very good. It's it's very good. Um, but the thing is at the end. Mm-hmm. They, uh, it's that every page is counting down to, you know, when the incursion is going to happen, and then it happens, and nothing happens. Right. And so all the Illuminati meet up and like, you know, what did you do anything? Did you do anything? Oh, Black Bolt was the one we missed. Black Bolt just yelled oh, at the moon. Yeah, <laughs> she always does. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but they're like, you know, uh, what what went wrong? You know, what, what happened? Did you do anything? Did you do anything? They're all kind of pointing fin- fingers, and everyone's saying that they didn't do anything. And then Black Bolt makes a symbol with his hands. And, you know, Tony's like, what is he saying? Because he doesn't understand Black Bolt at this point. Right, after all yeah. these years of hanging out with him. Uh, and Reed Richards says, like, Namor. It's like, Namor's not here. And it immediately cuts to Namor doing this. The story starts, mm-hmm. the whole Illuminati story start, starts with Reed Richards saying, everything dies, I want to solve that problem. Right. That's how they got into this whole problem. Mm-hmm. They were trying to figure out how to stop losing overall, right. every time. Same speech from Namor, but instead of there being a hopeful ending, him basically saying to a mystery group of, uh, I need you to help me destroy these worlds. Like, he knows he's the guy who's going to go that for that distance. Mm-hmm. His soul is gone. That he is willing to destroy the universe to save his own. Right. And they show him at the table, uh, just as Reed Richards was, with freaking Thanos, Black Swan, Maximus, Corvus Clave, Proxima Midnight, the two goons from Thanos' stuff. Alter- alternate Terex. Alternate reality yeah. Tyrax, and they're called the Cabal, which is they tease that a while back in Dark Reign of there being yeah. the anti Illuminati with mm-hmm. like Doom and everyone. And then the next page is like Rise of the Cabal, and then they go to showing another it's universe. Them destroying a planet, yeah. raising a planet. So awesome. Uh, I'm really excited about that. That stuff. was a big yeah. comic born for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same here. Same here. Like reading that last, that last two pages was like the last page of. The previous issue also with Namor doing what he had to do, and in this one too, you know, because it's like, is he going to be the most irredeemable person in the Marvel universe going forward? Are they? Is is Hickman saying, you know what, this guy was the original villain? Let's make him like the baddest dude yeah. around now, you yeah. know? Because the thing about Namor is he doesn't care. He cares yeah. about the planet. He doesn't care if he's a good guy or a bad guy. He's the true king. 
Right. He is like, that's what they've always kind of held. His morals have always done the f- fact that, you know, a ruler is a guy who makes the choices that no one else can make. And that's the burden of being the ruler. Right. And at this point, he's like, you know what? I have been around you people. I've listened to you guys talk about humanity and like surviving. And, all. and he loves conflict. He loves the idea of Going him being the strongest one. And right. This is it. This is like his his game. He loves the Imperius Rexing. What's interesting, too, is that, you know, because like, now the storyline jumps into six months in the future. Yeah. Uh, and now we get to work backwards every month to see what happens. Um, a few months ago in Avengers World, they teased that in the future, Thanos is one of the greatest Avengers of all time. Right. So I like the fact that you're playing with maybe, and I, Hickman does play with the Greys that much that he can make it so these guys may be right, that these guys maybe made the right choice. That's pretty awesome. So awesome. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it big time. That's probably like, I would say that's, like, I think like the, like the Hickman Avengers stuff may be my, far, my, my favorite Marvel stuff that's being put out. Right yeah, now. I think the like the whole family of Avengers, New Avengers, and Uncanny Avengers are like my three top of the food Avengers chain. War is really good too. Yeah, right. hold up on it. No, you know what? I forgot. I I, I read the it's good. It, get, it gets really good. I didn't read the last issue. Yeah. Good. Um, Secret Avengers is also another book people should keep alive. I slept on that man. <sighs> that's a Hawkeye book. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta check that. That out. is like way too. That's like a next. That's like the the second coming of next wave. Send me the files. I will give you the files. Send me the files. The files coming. Um, so, and, and the cool thing is like you had the alternate reality stuff, which Marvel does very well sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't really do too well, but most of the time it does very well. And the last issue we had them fight the JLA, their mm-hmm. version of the JLA. Uh, if you jump over to DC, which had multiversity number one come out this week, which is very, it was in the works for a very, very long time. Very. This is almost ten years ago. Is when it started. Uh, around fifty two. Yeah. And the original fifty two. Yeah. When uh, when the when the weekly series came out, um, this was the big thing that they were hinting at, that it's going to be the culmination of just like a lot of Morrisonian craziness. It was supposed to originally be fifty two issues, also, mm-hmm. and every issue was going to give you a window into one of the fifty two worlds in the DC universe. I would have been sold on that. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. I was, but I understand like it it changed a great deal. Yeah. Did you read? Did you do? Did you read the action comics? I didn't. I didn't go back. Uh, if you want, I have it available because I, I went back and I read yeah. it again because it plays in so much of this. So give us the rundown of the story. So um, I, I feel like if anybody's ever read uh, Animal Man, Morrison's run Animal Man, where it's very conscious of a superhero in a fictional world, this is in the next level. The most meta, right? This is the most meta where ever there's 52 universes, but. Each universe exists within the fiction of another universe. I think there's more they say in this in this fifty two yeah. universe that this is infinite forever. Okay, so or whatever. But that's that's like the yeah. gist of it. Where yeah. like, if Superman existed on this planet, he'd be a comic book on another in another universe, and that's kind of where the story is. And then there's like a big over. It's like it's like a crisis. There's a crisis happening, yeah. destroying all the universes, and you have to get essentially the Supermans from every universe. And they dug out that old character from Final Crisis, the Monitor. Uh, Nick's whatever his name is. Yes. Um, I forgot. I forgot too. Nick's yeah. Otano or whatever his name is. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and it starts out with uh, Obama Superman from Morrison's run on... Actually, no, I'm sorry. It starts out with the Monitor venturing off into... Being a comic book, going into the comic book. Mm-hmm. Right. Like venturing off into like this world that's getting destroyed by these faceless uh, monsters called the Gentry. Which... So I think it's DC. <laughs> yeah, I think I think this story is either about DC or the internet. Okay. Or both. I think it's about criticism of comics overall. Hmm. Because like the well, we'll continue with the story, please. So I'll you give know, you my theory afterwards. So um the monitor goes, he's he rescues this guy called the Thunderer. Thunderer, yeah. Um Which is a Thor analogy. Is it a Thor? Is it a an th- Australian because th- he mentions later on that he knows the Avengers team that they run into. Okay. That he like, oh, but they're like analogs of me. Okay. I think it's Australian, like an Aborigine Avenger team. Okay. I could be wrong. Pretty awesome. Um, so he's the Thunderer. He's like, you know, save yourself. Like, I got to deal with this. And the Monitor stays. The Thunderer jumps in his, uh, the Monitor ship made of sound and <laughs> sails to uh, headquarters, which is in the bleed, yeah. which if you guys remember from Authority, which was, I think, the first time that that concept yeah. was realized. Yeah. And then brought over into DC, which was awesome. Yeah. You know, so like the bleed exists between worlds. And recruits uh, Captain Carrot, Superman, Black Superman, Savage Obama Dragon. Superman, Savage Dragon, Savage Dragon, basically Savage Dragon, Dino Cop Man, yeah. <laughs> so great, and uh, a bunch of other characters, uh, Lady Aquaman, uh, yes, so Aquaman, Aquaman, the uh, 
if you go back and read Morrison's run on, I which I want to go back overall and read everything and, and, and it kind of co-sign with this mm. because we both agree that his run on action comics was very unusual, and yeah. that's where we first saw the first appearance of Obama Superman. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why we're saying Obama Superman because he looks like he was drawn to look like Obama. Black president, yeah, and he's a president. They they toned it down a bit more, but when Gene Ha was drawing him, he was drawing him exactly like Obama. Yeah, uh, and it was just it was during like the Obama reign and everything. That was very was rain. happy time. I mean presidency. <laughs> President <Rain. laughs> Uh He in that story they actually introduced like a bunch of those alternate guys, like the uh, the Red Racer guy, mm-hmm. uh, the Flash analogy, the one that right. knows the comics. He's mentioning that. As, remember, because remember, like the the storyline was about like the editor, the guy who like they're mm. in that issue. It's so weird where they had another Superman designed by three like Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and Superman were all just regular people who yeah. just wrote to create Superman, and they sold it to the Mitchell Metroplex uh, right. editor guy who decides to take it and does not pay them, and then make it into this like doomsday. Superman creature that goes to time and eating Superman's from another reality, right. but, but they show like the little the like there's a world full of midgets, uh, midget superheroes, which mm-hmm. I think is supposed to be like the little Gotham stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that Red Razor thing, which is, I think is supposed to be like the version of of like old Fifty Two when they have like Wally West as Red Razor. Yeah, as as a uh, Flash. Yeah, I'll 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 agree with that. Too. The weird thing is, it's like not not weird. Um, that issue nine. To me, it's always uh, of action comics has always been about how, you know, like the the meta the meta textual context of that was it's it's doesn't matter what Superman is, it's that you can slap the name Superman on anything this company puts out and people will buy it. Yep, and it doesn't matter at the end of the day if yep. it's good or bad. Um, that's how I always perceive that, and I feel like there's a lot of stuff that's like kind of tongue in cheek with even within this first issue of Multiversity, oh, yeah. and it's very very well layered and. The thing with all of Morrison's long form storytelling is that they blossom into crazy things that make you have to go back and read the other parts of it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I, I mean, he he loves doing shit like this in terms mm-hmm. of uh, uh, really taking a look at the, like the stuff he's done and like using a little bit of everything for it. Like he's drawn to like the, like now like the whole theme is all this the music stuff. Like when we read Seven Sol- Seven Soldiers, yeah, it was also about comic book storylines. You know, he seems to always write about the genre overall. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot is coming from the reaction because like you have to remember that like, Graham Morrison was the Brian Michael Bendis or you know figurehead of that co- of DC for a long period. Of time. He was the golden boy for a while. Him and Jeff Johns were mm-hmm. the the guys. They were the dudes. And it was awesome for fans like us who just like really appreciated that style of writing and the, the like, free reign. Yeah, like the like the stuff he's done that wasn't like oh it's gonna be good now you know like that's kind of I feel like that was the breath you took. Yeah, Boom. absolutely. And then he did Batman, and it was amazing, like <laughs> groundbreaking. Yeah. Lost a lot of fans because of it because it was so mm-hmm. vast and wide. Uh, and then something happened. Like New Fifty Two started, and Batman Inc. started coming out a lot less. Yeah. Uh, Action Comics was one of the most uneven, weird storylines in a long time. It wasn't what you were expecting, which mm. is, I think, part of it. With part of that, and the way that he wrote this, is his kind of disgust with uh, the process okay. of criticism over comics, over like the Fifty Two run, mm. over his past work and stuff like that. Like that big blob of like bad spelling and everything was, I think, like the like the Cthulhu head. I think is kind of like the the internet, the speaking, internet of, speaking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for the most part, um, he did the awesome nine panel gridding from Watchmen for the beginning with the when he goes out of the woman's hair. Yeah, they yeah. show like the 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 lice in her hair. Um, but I think it's I think overall it's just a gigantic critique of comics done in a really creative way. Okay, and comic fandom and comic fandom overall because uh, there's so many people talking about comics and talking about being fans of comics in this. Right. Well, because yeah, there's also like that the, the the second page is like I'm gonna do a vivisection of this comic and I'm gonna find out what it is. I'm tearing, I'm live tweeting, tearing apart a comic right now. My review is gonna be up soon. And Pirate Chimp, the Pirate Chimp guy, mm-hmm. is like you know like the uh, Detective Chimp, which was the figurehead of DC for a little time. Yeah, maybe it's supposed to be PC. Um, you never know, man. It's uh, it's Super you never know with with the Morrison stuff. Uh, I feel like it's gonna come out in like an interview or like uh, just playing around. 
I want to say like I want to say a concert, but it's like a, <laughs> like a speaking event. Um, and I really want to get to the bottom of it. The first thing I did after I read it was I went online to see if there was any kind of like Uber explanation, a panel by panel thing that has been done. With m- Jesse Nevins stuff. Yeah, like that has been done a million times with Grant Morris's work. You know, like just so you don't miss a, a beat because um, it's all going to come to a head. And I'm I'm pretty sure that this isn't the fix for. DC. Oh no, 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 no. Uh as much as I would love it to be, but I think it's just it's a it's it's a it's a beacon of hope because it's something that you're kind of looking forward to and it's it's happening and Morrison's back in the fold. Yeah. You know. And you get to see them, you get to see the Avengers in the first issue. Exactly. You see Dr. Doom mm-hmm. getting yarn born and the Infinity Gauntlets. Right. And uh Crowds of Cube. What was the uh what was the name of uh of their read? Cuz I like I like the the name of their read. Oh, uh I love the Crusaders. You call it Joe Stretch? Uh, what was his name? I'm going to get to that page. I'm opening it right now. No, the Baby Hulk, the big giant blue Hulk. Mm-hmm. Um, Frank Future. Frank Future. <laughs> um, so good. Really good stuff, they, But they've used him before. They've used all these characters before mm-hmm. in like that awful crisis uh, countdown crap. You know Extremist. Never, never read it. Like, well, they used to use like uh, the Doctor Doom analogy is the leader of a team called Extremist and they were all like there was a Magneto there was a Sabretooth it was like from the era of uh, like Bloodwind being on JLA okay and like uh, those people those, yeah. those guys the good times what is your take on Multiversity? Uh, I absolutely love it I mean this is the stuff that I live and die for um, I've waited for this for a very long period of time I love the idea of Every issue being, it's a lot shorter than what's supposed to be. And I, I think it's okay to rein him in every once in a while. Mm. I think it's like seven or eight issues. Uh, like they're gonna they're gonna focus on one particular world and have it rejoin each of them rejoin this kind of ragtag team led mm-hmm. by Cyber Dragon, which I think is so freaking weird that he's using Cyber Cyber Dragon. Um, <laughs> I don't because it's, it's all a comic book universe. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like it's so it's so good, but just the fact that he's using like I love Cyber Dragon, so the fact that yeah. they're using this like pretty important character in my life as one of the focal points of the story is very unusual from uh-huh. another company. Um, I don't see it being the fix, like you said. Like I don't think this is going to be a crisis thing. I think this is going to be one of these, uh, hopefully one of these things that we kind of look back on is, as a really awesome examination of the time period that we're going through, mm-hmm. the weirdness of the comp, uh, industry at this time. But we talk about that all the time. Yeah. You know, how like it's just like you don't know. It's not, it's not, uh, Stanley answering letters in the '60s from a mailbag, and then that's it. That's all you heard about it. You yeah. know, it's now. It's like while you can I, I talk about this with my wife a bit too. We're like, yeah, p- people also suffer from the fear of missing out. Mm. I think that goes with anything pop culture. Where oh, hell yeah. if you're not attached to the forums and you're not attached to Twitter, you're gonna miss stuff. Yeah, you're and not, you're not an active member of the community, and it's all and, and it's like a double edged sword because it's like I'm not going to be around to bitch at stuff. I'm also not going to be around to praise stuff, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and comic form, I can't even go on forums. We always talk about how we can't go on forums because it's like you're just hearing you're hearing overly worded opinions about stuff that's just it doesn't matter, you know. And I want to see how the I want I want to see how the implosion reacts to multiversity. Yeah, I well from I think it's something that is not really being talked about that much mm-hmm. at first. And I think that's same thing with Seven Soldiers. Seven Soldiers were something that we were incredibly looking forward Super to. Super into. Yeah. And, and and like when it was coming out it was the greatest thing in the world and we were like some of the few people that were still talking about it. Yeah. Cuz everyone was kind of burnt out from like 52 and and like a weekly book mm-hmm. again and all this stuff, but I thought it was freaking fantastic. I think this book is also going to be it's so highbrow. I'm not saying it's it, it's it's too smart for its own good. Mm-hmm. I just think that the way that we communicate about stuff is that the people who would talk about this, the ones that would give it the right attention, are too busy worrying about the other shit. Yeah, too busy worrying about nail biter. Nail biter. I love. Uh, I like nail biter. Neck beards. Um, <laughs> I, I like. There's there's a thing that you just who popped into my mind. I remember when the Seven Soldier stuff came out. Um, again, it's like it's there's there's a million types of different comic book fans. But when the Seven Soldier stuff came out, and I think DC's at fault for just being DC with this, and there's no other way around it, is that if you you have the DC stamp on the cover, That's the majority it. of dudes are not going to pick up a Clarion book. 
No. You know? And they're bringing them back. Okay. They, next uh, next month, his mm-hmm. Clarion book comes out, ironically. But that's the thing, where when Seven Shoulders came out, like all the guys, all the older guys who used to come to the store would be like, what is this crap? Why do I want to buy this? And we'd be like, give it a chance. Excellent writer. He wrote this, this, and this. Yeah. You like this, right? Well, Frankenstein's sells brown. It's Clarion. It's stupid. You know? And like you get Hoop with the Guardian. I don't Shine, care about this guy. Night. Yeah. You know, like it's, it, it's like that kind of disconnect where... And DC would suffer from that, or like I feel like a book like this doesn't attract the mainstream fan. But if you put like let's say like a like a Vertigo stamp on it, it might make it more attractive to the mainstream fan. Well, look at know? remember like one of our favorite stories that is never talked about aside from outside of our circle, uh, Doctor Thirteen, right? One yeah. of the most scathing critiques of uh, an industry mm-hmm. from the inside of it by someone who's been involved in all this, which time. was a backup. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a backup story, and it was incredibly well done. They had the the, the the uh, Mount Rushmore creature yeah. with the heads of the 52 writers. Awesome. Yeah. But that's the stuff. is like, I think, I think part of it also is DC is so tainted where when people are looking for new stories for, they're looking for like, Ooh, is, is Wonder Woman going to wear a leather jacket this time? Or like, you know, the, the stupid minutia that yeah. we attach ourselves to, like her butt looks too big. Mm-hmm. You're right. It's all about the stupid minutia that just drives people up a wall. This is my first, this is my first read. Same uh, here. 44 pages of story, um, tight, yeah. super tight, looks great, awesome. He's, you know, he's bringing back a lot of the, the talent that he's worked with. Like Chris Bouse is coming to work mm-hmm. with him. Um, oh, where can you go wrong with this? Why wouldn't you pick this book up? Pick this book up. Multiversity number one. Andrew, pick the book up. Pick the book up. Okay. I also picked up the, the Wonder Woman from this week. Sensation? Yeah. Uh, came, another one came out this week, too. Two, two issues came out. Really? Sensation one came out last week. Sensation two came out this week. I think I picked up the one. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't read them yet. They're supposed to be awesome. Okay. I'll check them out. I think that does it for us. Uh, Melting. This has been another episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich. I'm, uh, I'm John. Good night. Good night.